Hey, you're listening to Burst Your Bubble. I'm Josh, and I've got Kyler here with me. We're here to bring you the sharpest sports takes. Today, we have a special episode. We're doing an NFL 2020 first-round mock draft. It's our first time to host a mock draft on Burst Your Bubble, and I think I made all the correct picks no matter what actually happens on Thursday. Remember to stay plugged into our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Burst Your Bubble. We are available everywhere you can get your podcast. You can even get us on your Alexa devices. If you're bored at home, just say, Alexa, play Burst Your Bubble podcast. Then remember to rate, review, share us with your friends, your family, the lady at Starbucks, the guy down at McDonald's, everyone that you talk to, tell them about Burst Your Bubble. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, no hard feelings, because more than likely, one of us will burst your bubble. The draft is finally here. While you're listening to this, the draft is tomorrow. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's already passed, and now you're listening to see how wrong Josh was with all those picks. Either way, Josh, the draft is on Thursday night. And here's the rumors. I mean, one through seven at least are looking to move back. Josh, what do you you think about that? Uh, I think that there will be some movement. I don't know if it's one through seven. Uh, but I think that we are going to see some movement in this year's draft. I think that there's some teams with a lot of picks, and I think that this is a deep draft. I think that some of these teams could find their guy in the second, third, and fourth round and not have a problem. Absolutely, and you're going to see a lot of that. A lot of the linemen, you're going to see a lot of really quality linemen on both sides of the ball. Day one starters come out of those second and third rounds. But let's talk about the top of the draft for a second. And uh, jo- Josh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know, and I don't want to sway you at all. I'm sure your your picks are already in. But – Today, the the odds for number one pick swung dramatically. I mean, it had been back and forth pretty close, pretty much to a pick em between Aiden Hutchinson, Trevon Walker, you know, the, a couple new guys. You know, Kayvon Thibodeau, I think, is probably him him to go 5, 000, plus 5,000 to go number one. I'd, I'd lay some money on that. You know, Evan Neal, the uh, the other uh, offensive tackle, Okonwu. But tw- Trayvon Walker, Josh, is now at minus 190 to go first overall. Well, so I mean, I wonder, I wonder what the uh, what the sway is here. I mean, I'm the, not... the 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 way those are swayed is completely based on money. So if somebody came in and placed a huge bet on Tra- Trayvon Walker, the the odds swing in his favor. Well, I so it seems like I, somebody knows something, or they just really want to be right. Maybe, maybe, and they probably got him at some pretty good odds because they probably bet him at a time when it was not minus one ninety, probably when he was. Plus something, I would imagine. All right, Josh, let's get into it. Are you ready? Uh, I I think I am. Give me one. Yeah, me ja- Jacksonville has the number one pick. Jacksonville, I mean, of course, you know, they had a a, rough, a turmoil season, a turmoil-filled season. I mean, Urban Meyer put them through the absolute ringer. He put a couple girls through the ringer. Uh, they're in look of an edge rusher for sure. An offensive tackle to protect protect their star and protect their golden goose, the, the golden horse, I should call them. But they're also looking for some wide receivers for them to throw the ball to. So, Josh, what do you see the Jacksonville Jaguars doing with this number one pick overall? So, number one overall, I don't think that they mess up here. I think that they snag the guy with the highest floor uh, in in the draft at the top of the draft. And I think that they get Aiden Hutchinson number one overall. Yep. Uh, it makes the most sense. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pick uh, for them. He can become a cornerstone with Josh Allen over there. Uh, on the DE, I just think it's I think it's a safe pick. You can't screw that one up. Right. Um, when you when you have the number one overall pick, you just want to pick the best person available, the best person on the pitcher scheme, and you do that with Aiden Hutchinson. We saw how dominant he was at Michigan, and he completely changed the game single handedly. You don't mess up yep. this pick, and you get out of the way. Sure. And uh, you know, not mu- I, like you said, Josh. I'm not much. I'm not sure how much better he can get. Which honestly, almost I think it might cost him the number one pick. Because the next level of play is on the Bosa brothers level. And I just, I'm not sure if he's ever going to get there. But like you said, the floor is so low, Josh. He's already so good that, I mean, he, like, I mean, my, my question for you is he enough of a game disruptor to take number one? I, I think so. I, I think that he's okay. probably the most NFL ready. Uh, you know, that there's some there's some traits that you don't want to see or that you didn't see from him from some of these teams. Yeah. But I think just coming right out of college, making an impact, uh, this is one of the guys. I mean, this is the guy. I think he's going to be able to do it. We saw him disrupt everything in college. I have no reason to believe that he's not going to do it uh, coming out of the gate in Jacksonville. And they need a stud on the defensive side to pair with Josh Allen. I mean, that was a problem. 
Um, and so I think this is a smart move. They've obviously went all in on a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. And I think that this really helps the team. All right. Number two pick, uh, the Detroit Lions. I mean, obviously with, with how, as much talent on the board, you know, they're looking for somebody on the defensive line, also looking for a wide receiver. And Josh, here's the thing, sneakily could be looking for a quarterback. I mean, they got Jared Goff on their roster, but I mean, it might, might not be a bad, not bad choice. Maybe trade back and go to quarterback later. What do you think? Uh, no, I think that they go ahead and make a pick. Um, and I think that it's going to be a, a, it's not a questionable pick because this guy is uh, one of the best players, if not the best actual player uh, in the draft with potential. And I think that they're going to go ahead and snag uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. I love I think it. They're going to take Thibs. Tibbs. I, I just, you know, the only thing, the only question mark here is, you know, uh, Dan Campbell is a, is a culture guy. He is, you know, you, we want the right fit and, and Thibodeau, you know, there's been a little bit question with the attitude. So he's going to become a little bit of him meshing with the team. And if they're okay with him and they believe that he can fit in with the culture. And I think that they, I think that he will. And I think this will be the pick for Detroit. Uh, the only, yeah, I'm going to reiterate what you said. The only negative I've heard about this guy all season, all off season, I should say, are funny interview answers and perhaps a lack, a lack of effort in certain points in the season. Sounds a little bit like an Anthony Edwards in the NBA to me. Sounds like, you know, back, back in the day when he said he didn't like, he didn't like basketball in the pre-draft interviews. Now he's obviously in the NBA playoffs. To, obviously this got beat, spoiler alert. But he, Kayvon Thibodeau is my steal for the draft. He can play any position on the line. Multiple moves to get to the quarterback. Excellent run stopper in any scheme. I love Kayvon Thibodeau. The, I think the Lions have nailed it with this one. Yep, I agreed. I just, it makes too much, once again, it just makes too much sense to not go here. Houston up next. Obviously, you know, they're looking to boost up that defensive line as well. Offensive tackle, a struggle for them. Wide receiver. I mean, they gave away a couple in free agency. Uh, I think they traded one away as well. Uh, so what does Houston do here? Uh, they sure up the offensive line. Okay. They protect their the second-year quarterback. Uh, uh, Davis Mills, is he's either the guy or he's not, and they've got to be able to figure that out. But to do that, they've got to give him the best protection possible. You don't want to see – you don't want to see a situation like Joe Burrow where he goes in and he gets hurt, blows out his knee, or you're getting sure. sacked that many times. Not every quarterback is is Joe Burrow in his second year. So you've got to protect Davis Mills. I think that they snag Evan Neal from Alabama. Evan Neal. Yes, Evan Neal from Alabama. Uh, I, I think that he could have been number one overall. I mean, he is he is one of the guys who will be a cornerstone for the offensive line, and and he'll be there. I mean, great awareness. Great lower half movement, especially in the run game. He can get to the second level, and much like we saw Worth do last year. Lynn, like you said, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Jacksonville snagged him number one, especially with that with what they want to do with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Evan Neal, I think, is the best offensive lineman in, in this draft. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, and I think that's why he's the first one off the board. Yep, obviously. Now let's go with the Jets. Uh, they're looking for an edge rusher, wide receiver. Also a defensive back, maybe just, uh, Josh, they're looking for everything, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, they need a lot. Um, obviously, they would have loved to have uh, one of the edge rushers. I think that would have been ideal, but I think with both of them off the board, I think they go with... Um, I wouldn't say both of them. I'd say there's three edge rushers that stand out to me. Uh, oh, yes, I, I believe that you are correct, um, and I... I did miss one, but I don't have him going here. Um, <laughs> I know. Um, I, I just I think that they're going to make a different pick here. I think that – oh, Kyler, I'm so sorry. I was looking ahead. Uh, New York Jets are going to select Trayvon Walker. They are going to get the edge rusher that they did need at the top. Uh, one of the best ones available. Yeah, like you said, number one odds – or number one odds to go number one overall. They're going to go with with the best pass rush available because that's what they need more than anything. So I'm going to sure up that defensive edge, and I think that they're going to find it with Trayvon Walker, who could have been the number one overall pick. Siding to four is a huge deal for the Jets in a great way to, to bolster that, that defense side of the ball. I mean, 6'5", 270, runs a four five forty. Excels on the edge, but he can get it done on the inside too. And here's the here's the thing, Josh. He's the opposite of Aiden Hutchinson in that many scouts believe he's nowhere near his ceiling. Yeah, and I I tend to agree. I think that he's got a he's got a ways to go. He can get so much better. 
and, and that's you know that's why I said they're going to take the floor guy at number one with mm-hmm. Aiden Hutchinson. But I think this guy's ceiling is just off the charts. Love it. I love that, Josh. Yeah, you almost slipped me up there with not not with letting uh letting the number one odds pick go that long. I think he's going to slip to like seven. My goodness. All right, let's go to number five. The the Giants. I mean, they're in the same same city, kind of playing the Meadowlands. I mean, looking for an offensive lineman. I th- they're going to give Danny Dimes one more shot up, I suppose. A linebacker would help. I mean, some defense to stop the other team from scoring would help. Uh, what do you see the Giants doing here? Uh, so I think that the Giants are going to go ahead. Um, I've heard, I've seen a lot of mocks say that they're going to wait because they do have the seventh okay. pick that they will wait on offensive tackle. Um, but I don't think so. I think that this is a draft, once again, it's a team that needs to take care of your quarterback. There's only one team in between uh, the picks here, and, and you don't think that they're going to go here. So I think that you're not worried about what the Panthers are going to do. You're not worried about the Panthers trading back. You're not worried about, about what's going to happen there. So to me, you go ahead and you take Akeem Akwanu. Absolutely. If Evan, you just, yeah, you're exactly right with those last two picks. Um, you're picking those offensive linemen back-to-back. If those two teams have those – picks available it's a no doubt yeah so i mean it, it just makes once again it's one of those things where it makes too much sense um it, it's best player on the board right here i think i, I think that you just snag him um if makai beckton's kind of down by injury again you've got a quanu a quanu he's a sorry i was looking at the, i was looking at my wrong team again uh a quanu is a potential long long-term guy no, like you're gonna be you're gonna play him for years Exactly right, Josh. And going to a run-heavy te- a scheme like the Giants, I mean, that's where he excels best. And he can play both tackle and guard. But worst case, I mean, he's better at guard. He moves inside. He's going to make 10 Pro Bowls. Completely agree. All right, let's move on. Number six, Carolina. I mean, Carolina, Josh, here's, here's where things get interesting. I mean, everyone's saying they're going for a quarterback. What say you? Uh, it says me. Malik Willis goes to Carolina. Uh, I, I think it's the move. Um, Malik, you know, he may not be the the most NFL ready quarterback here, but I think they I think he's worth the gamble for Carolina Panthers. Carolina is going to keep swinging on quarterbacks. They've said that uh, until they find one. So I think this is uh, the exact same spot here um, with Evan Neal and uh, Iquanu off the board. I think that's why they go quarterback. I think if one of those offensive tackles somehow slides down to six, I think they go offensive tackle. But with the two best off the board, I think they take Malik Willis and they go uh, and they go quarterback. I think Malik Willis and Carson Strong have the the strongest arm, the best arm in the class. Malik Willis by far and away. I mean, him and Desmond Ritter have the most athleticism by far. Um, and like uh, Desmond Ritter, which we'll mention later, maybe um, Malik Willis has a learning curve because of his athleticism. I think is really going to let him blossom in the NFL. Uh, with Carolina, not too sure, but we will see. That That's a good pick from Carolina, though. All right, back. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I think that's exactly what happens. I think you're right. All right, Giants, offensive line, of course, we're looking to bolster that up some more. I'll, I mean, the same thing as earlier, uh, linebacker and an edge rusher. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are at seven with the Giants. Yep. Yeah, I think this is where they uh, they go back and they take, um, they take the guy that they – really weren't necessarily worried about Carolina taking, and that could be a, sw- a swap here of where they take them. But uh, I think that they're going to go ahead and take Ahmad Garner, cornerback uh, out of Cincinnati. Um, you know, I, to me, I think it's uh, 1A, 1B, and I don't know which order you want to put these guys, but with Ahmad Garner and uh, – Josh, I could, you're, doing this man, you're doing this man a disfavor not calling him Sauce. Sorry, Sauce. Uh, between Sauce and Stingley, I think that it is a 1A, 1B – you choose who you want to be where, but I think that he fits with the Giants perfectly. Uh, I think that Martindale system will just fit Sauce. I think that he's got all the he's got everything you need for him to play in the NFL level, and I think he's going to fit in perfectly with the New York Giants. They they shored up the offensive line. Now let's get some guys back in the secondary so we can make some plays. I mean, you're right. I mean, his ability to recover is unworldly. I mean, sometimes he gets beat off the line. He's not necessarily he doesn't have the best acceleration. But his ability, he's so long, his ability to recover, mess plays up. I mean, I don't see how this pick misses. He checks every single box. Yeah, I, I completely agree. This guy is, I mean, he is what he is. He's a freak. And he's athletic. Swag. Josh, you there. see that big-ass chain he wore to the, to the combine? It said <laughs> sauce on it. 
Oh, yeah. And that, man, golly. All right, number eight. Oh, this team needs a quarterback for sure, Josh. Who are they getting? Uh, I don't think they're getting a quarterback. Fuck. <laughs> um, and this is kind of a uh, – this is one that I struggle with, to be honest with you. I was torn between wide receiver and defensive yeah. edge. Um, and, and I think I'm going to – you know, like I said, this one, uh, this one I struggle with pretty hard. Uh, but I think that they are going to go ahead and take Jermaine Johnson. Mm, Jermaine Johnson. Where's he out of? Florida State. Florida Florida State. State. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think, I mean, Atlanta had the worst pass rush in 21. I think it's too early for a quarterback. They need somebody on the defensive side. Obviously, they need help at quarterback. But I think uh, for them, it just makes it just too – I mean, you got to do the smart thing and cheer up your defense. That's what he, I've been talking about on this podcast for yeah. two years now. This defense is atrocious. It's just like the uh, Arizona Cardinals. So let's get a little bit better on defense here in Atlanta, and let's get down the road. He's a safe pick. I mean, he's gotten better each year in college, and I expect that the same at the next level. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. We're now on the Seahawks, right? Yes, Seahawks. They, gosh, they got to get a quarterback. The Seahawks are not getting a quarterback. This draft is going to be boring as fuck. Who are they getting? Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are going to get my favorite cornerback in the draft. And okay. That is going to be Derek Stingley Jr. Yep. Um, they could get a quarterback here, but I don't think so. I think uh, they are going to uh, – you know, Seattle is once known as leads in a boom collar. Yep. This, this team is known for defense. I think that this is going to be a great corner. He's got the height. Uh, he's got – I mean, he's got the athleticism. He's got what you want. Uh, obviously in 2019, if that was the only tape he saw, he would have went first overall. Yeah. But obviously he, uh, you know, had some health couple injuries. Of years. I saw the, I saw the tape in the combine. I saw him in the spring. I'm not worried about the health. I Love think it. that he's going to be a fierce competitor in the NFL. Derek Singley Jr. Number nine pick. I'm sure we'll talk about this guy later, but Dax Hill, he would also be a great, uh, Legion of Boom member, yeah, and he would have been back in the day as well. That man fucking hit sticks people. But Derek Stingley Jr., he, I mean, his in- instincts are out of the world. He, But sometimes he gets himself into situations where he can get burned on jump balls. Um, it'd be best if he got put in a situation with at least one established corner, hopefully two. Yeah, but, I think that, I think this just helps. I think it fits. You need think, a guy yeah. here to, to balance the other side. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, New York Jets. The New York Jets are back on the board, Josh. Who they're grabbing? I mean, they they grabbed who did they grab it for? I, for, I forget already. But uh, they're uh, they Trayvon sh- Walker. Yep, they need a wide receiver. Uh, they do need a wide receiver, <laughs> very bad. Um, so I'm I'm looking here at my big board. Uh, I, I think it just makes too much sense here, Kyler. Well, I don't know. I I struggle with this one too. I thought they also could have won another defensive position here. But they do need a wide receiver, and that's why they're going to take Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. I mean, how could you not? He's he's completely polished, Josh. He's ready for game one tomorrow. He is. I mean, this is one of the guys, you know, he, he's just here to play. He's going to do his thing, and he's not worried about it. He'll figure the rest out later. Yeah. I mean, just around six foot, six foot even, really. Plays a lot taller than that. Um, and he does his best work after the catch. Debo, like, I would, I would, I'm mean, I, I very, I don't compare anybody. I hate comparing people Debo like. Yeah, yeah, because it d- does not just happen very often. All right, now on to Washington. I mean, uh, uh, not Washington, right? Yep, Washington. Washington, the the commanders looking for a defensive back, looking for a wide receiver, looking for a linebacker, some team needs. Uh, I think that they're going to go wide receiver here. Hmm. Okay, uh, I, I mean, that and that, that is notable, Josh. They, I, and they said, as soon as the wide receiver goes off the board, we're going to see a line of wide receivers. Once we see a quarterback go off the board, we're going to see a line of quarterbacks. Well, so I think the reason that they take a wide receiver here is because of the question marks around Terry McLaurin's contract. Uh, you know, there's there's uncertainty there. They don't have a lot of lot of choices at wide receiver, and I think they're going to take one of the most explosive ones uh, who went down and probably – uh, you know, with this injury lost Alabama championship game, that's gonna be Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams, he's out of Alabama, he's the one that tours ACL in the in the yes, coming out. I guarantee you, he is still the fastest of all of these elite receivers. I mean, obviously, there, there's some guys later in the later in the draft that are gonna be run faster 40s in him on the field out of these elite receivers. He's the fastest, and that's after the ACL injury. I mean, he's had too many drops that can be fixed. 
he's too talented in too many places not to make an immediate impact. I love that pick for Washington. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, I think that, it makes too much sense. They need him. And just a quick question, Washington. How many weeks will it take before Tyler Heineke – Taylor or Tyler? Taylor. Taylor Heineke starts over. Carson Wentz. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be a it's going to be a battle in the quarterback room. You think they got to love Carson bringing him in? But I, I mean, if you go, if you go, one and one and three, Josh. If you pay somebody thirty million dollars, you have to love them. Yeah, if, I feel like if you go one and three, one and four, you're at least looking at bringing him in. Oh, oh man. Let's move on to that before people get mad at us. Minnesota, Minnesota, <laughs> Minnesota. Hey, let's see who they're going to pick. Hey, they they like a defensive back. Maybe a uh, tackle. They would love a defensive back. Um, and I think that's exactly what they do here. I think that they take um, – sorry, I'm looking at my big board here. I think that they're going to take Trent McDuffie. Trent McDuffie. Out of Washington. Hey, I like it a lot. A little undersized. Uh, yeah, well, I think that they – I think they had cornerback no matter what in this spot. I think they really wanted uh, Derek Singley Jr. And in a couple of mocks I've done, I had them trading up to nine with Seattle. But I think Seattle is going to stay put uh, where they're at and not really worry about trading back too much. I think that they wanted to go ahead and land their guy. And so I think that uh, Minnesota, you know, they're, they're not going to say it, but I think they're, they settled here with Trent. And uh, it's yep. a good fit. You know, he didn't give up touchdown in the last two years he played. Um, I, I think it's just cheering up a little bit of the defense. Well, it's be, and I read this about him. I watched a little bit of coverage on him. It, he's so technically sound in all of his coverages and all of his assignments that they hardly throw to his side. I mean, his side is never open because of how technically sound he is. And that, that could translate to the lack of interceptions. He's, he's, uh, or the, well, the lack of touchdowns he's, he's, um, he's allowed over the past two years. But I, these are two quotes that, or one quote that I've gotten that I saw from uh, an anonymous executive. One of the safest players in the draft. So great, great pick there. Uh, yeah, and like I said, you know, it's one of these things. I think they're just settling without Minnesota, having hey, to say they're settling. Look out for Minnesota next year. That brand new coach, Kevin O'Connell, in there. I think him and did you? I, I implore people to watch the Kirk Cousins interview on McAfee and the and the Kevin O'Connell interview on McAfee, and they're the same person. So I'm I'm pretty high on on the Minnesota Vikings. I think Kirk Cousins got somebody in there that understands him. Hmm, well, that would help a lot. Yeah. Better than Mike fucking Zimmer. Uh, Houston. Uh, I mean, uh, Houston's a dumpster fire. Josh, what are they doing here? Uh, I think they take best player available. Jordan Davis. Kyle Hamilton. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It helps. It just it just helps screw up the defense a little bit. Um, it's another guy that I, I think some other people would maybe like them to go some other positions, maybe another defensive edge, maybe a DT, something like that. But I think uh, – I, I think – Kyle Hamilton helps this team a lot. I think he fills the holes. I think he does exactly what they need him to do. Yeah, pass game, I mean, his, his height and fluidity to the ball. It's a mismatch against a lot of NFL players right now. Um, the run game, he seems to be in on every tackle. He's a can't miss. Yeah. That brings us to your team, Josh. Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it's amazing that he fell right to us. Um, he just It's a perfect prototype of what you want as a Baltimore defender. Uh, we're known for hardcore football collar, um, and this guy is going to be huge. He hits hard. Yep. He's athletic. He's strong, and his name is Jordan Davis out of Georgia. I love it. Defensive Jordan. tackle. Yep, Jordan Davis out of Georgia, Josh. That man, I mean, he obviously he put on an absolute show at the clinic, which was, I mean, people really aren't even talking about that enough. I mean, obvi Josh, what's up with that? I mean, when he's on the field, he makes plays at every level. But the question becomes, Josh, how consistently can he, can he stay on the field for, I mean, a full drive, let alone a full game? Yeah, and that is, I mean, that is the big question mark is the health. But, you know, I think in a place like like Baltimore, they've got a great medical staff. They believe in the team. Um, it's a depth piece here. I think that he's going to be able to come in. Um, he'll play with some of the better better known defenders in the in the in the world in the history of the NFL are going to be coming in and uh, mentoring this guy and kind of teaching him you know how to take care of your body how to prep and I think all that's going to work out perfectly uh, going into the winter whenever you're hitting hard no one's going to be running over Jordan Davis he's going to be running over you that is not a doubt son uh, Philadelphia 
Josh, they got it. They, I mean, Josh, they have to draft a wide receiver. Um, <laughs> the Eagles are another team that really need um, a lot. I mean, they could go wide receiver here, but they also need, I mean, I think that they're very sad that Kyle Hamilton's off the board. They, I think they really wanted a safety. They could probably use a cornerback. Um, they'd probably love to have an edge rusher before they had a wide receiver. Um, I just don't think any of them are are here and are falling to where they want. So I think they are going to take wide receiver here, unfortunately for them. And I think they're going to take Drake London out of USC. Yep. I like Drake London. You don't like him? Uh, I don't dislike him. I think he's a big guy. He'll go up and get some of those, you know, 50-50 balls. Um, I think the hope here is just to balance out the offense on the other side. He's six foot four probably use him a little bit like they have other players in the past um he did a lot of good things at usc so i, I think it fits what they want i think it's just going to be a matter of can jalen hurts get him the ball no josh jalen hurts can definitely get drake london the ball his catch radius brings up scary scary comparisons he's 6'4 220 josh i won't even mention the the catch the radius comparisons throw it up and watch this guy go work he will make a ton of money he won't he's not the fastest guy but his ability to learn and grow as a player, I've got a lot of faith with with Drake London. Maybe not in Philly, but in the NFL. Well, I mean, if anywhere, I mean, I think that this is just as good a spot as any for him to land because Jalen. The one thing about Jalen Hurts is He'll throw it up. He will he will throw the ball up? It's a <laughs> lot like uh, it's like Johnny Manziel and Mike Evans back in the day. Just throw the ball up and he'll come down with it. I'm saying Drake London and the, the uh, what's his name, Market Mar- Marcus Smith. Marcus, Marcus Callaway. Callaway. Yeah, Callaway, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them two together, I like that. I mean, because they have Rager was such a miss. Um, anyways, Nola. Let's see what Nola does, Josh, here. This is their first pick of the draft. I mean, they've got they've got their boy Jameis back. He's he's a starter. Are they gonna get him a weapon? Are they gonna get him some some uh a tackle up front, or do they? I mean, Josh, there's rumors they're looking at quarterback. Uh not with this pick. With this pick, they're going to uh they're gonna do the safe thing. Um, I was trying to find my uh a little thing on this guy, but I'll just go off my memory here. Um, they're going to go ahead and take Trevor Penning. They're going to sure up the line. They're going to protect the quarterback a little bit. Uh, they're, that's the number one thing that you have to do here if you're New Orleans. Uh, even if you do look at a quarterback later on in the draft, you have to take care of the guy um, that's, that you're going to be using. For Northern Iowa, um, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's just nasty, and I think he's going to be the one that fights in the trenches for New Orleans. He's exactly what Sean Payton wants in a player. I'm unfamiliar with him. Tell me what position does he does he specialize at? Uh, oh, Trevor, I'm uh, looking at him right now. So, uh, yeah, I like him a lot. I'm watching. I mean, he is an offensive him. tackle. Um, I mean, it would be on the right side of the of the line. Yeah, I'm watching his tape right now. He looks good. He's get, he he gets to the second level pretty easily as well. Yeah, I mean, he he's a guy. He's going to knock you down. I mean, he's going to block for you. He'll take care of you. Continued effort. I like the, I like the pick. I like the pick. I was un, 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 unaware unaware of him. I wish they would have went uh, receiver to try and help Jameis out because I don't think Kent Guard Mike is going to play again. That's not breaking that. I have no sources on that, by the way, but I don't think he's going to play. Hmm. Well, uh, that's tough. That is tough. Uh, Chargers, LA Chargers. I mean, they, of course, they've, they've got their boys. They've got their – Josh, they spent a ton of money this offseason. The Chargers have spent a ton of money this offseason. They've got a nice draft pick sitting here at 17. I mean, they could get an offensive tackle, defensive, defensive tackle. There's a lot of good cornerbacks left. Where do they go? Um, I think that, you know, this is a tough spot for the Chargers as well because I think that they also would have liked Derek Stingley or uh, Duffy. But I think that now that those guys are off the board, I think that they have to kind of retool and relook at the game plan. And, uh, you know, I think that they also would have really liked to see um, Trevor Penning there, but I think mm-hmm. that they're kind of hurt by the Trevor Penning pick uh, in New Orleans. So I think that they're kind of uh, thrown off here. Um, Jordan Davis being off the board hurts too. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a couple of positions that they could go, but I think that they are going to go ahead and that they're going to take. Oh, I'm trying to find the name, Kyler. I'm so sorry. I think that they're going to go ahead and You know, I'm, I'm having trouble, Kyler, because I think that they have a lot that they need to do. They could go linebacker. 
Um, there's a linebacker I'm staring at. There's a defensive tackle I'm staring at. And there's another offensive tackle I'm looking at. So that's yeah. the, that is the very difficult decision here that the Chargers are going to have to make. So you can put me on the clock. What you can um, pay the big bucks for. Yeah, that is it. Um, I, you know, I'm on the clock. And I'm going to uh, – give me one second here. I think that we are going to take the Kobe Dean linebacker out of Georgia. Josh, I love that pick so much. Undersized linebacker, he can make a play at any time on anybody, whether that's the quarterback, whether that's the running back, whether that's the tight end. Josh, it doesn't matter. He, he can especially – cover the tight end and running back underneath on wheel routes and on screen plays, things like that. Watch for this guy to have a few, a few pick sixes and early in his career. I love Nicobe Dean. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that he's Josh, you got in well, you got to be a fucking stud to come out of Georgia as a junior. Yeah, that is true. I, mean, I love Nicobe Dean. All right. Let's see who we got up next. Surprise, surprise, we got Philly again. Okay, and last pick for Philadelphia, we had them taking Drake London. Yep. Which would, uh, okay, so that means they probably don't need back to back um, wide receivers. Well, I mean, shit, you, James wouldn't, wouldn't oppose. Oh, Philly. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, um, Philly. Philly. Um, Jalen Hurts. No, so I think that the Eagles, you know, I said kind of what they needed a second ago. They need a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, cornerback still being that number one thing, but obviously they're not going to get that. So I think that they're going to go ahead and take the other another guy from Georgia. Georgia's kind of going on a run here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him Devontae Wyatt. Devontae Wyatt. I like that pick a lot. Um, you know, if you got Fletcher Cox and Hargrave mm-hmm. in the final year, why, you know, I think that it's good. Uh, they had that guy in the third round last year um, who did pretty good towards the end of the year. I think it'll make a pretty good duo. Uh, I think this is just a smart pick for Philadelphia. They got the offensive weapon that they needed to balance out the offense. This is a little bit to balance out the defense. Can't disagree with that. Let's move on. Nola, once again. Okay, give me one second. I'm fixing my uh, fixing my draft here. I'm plugging in names. See, a lot of people peek behind the curtain. A lot of people think that I already have these guys selected. Clearly, as long as it took me to make that Charger selection, that is incorrect. And why I'm doing it live here on the show with you all. So, you know, we're just having a blast. Uh, Kyler, this is a moment that everyone has been waiting for. New Orleans is not going to replace Drew Brees with Jameis Winston. This is where they select Kenny Pickett, quarterback from Pitt. Wow. A Kenny Pickett selection. We get the first quarterback. So, no, we got his quarterback taken early. Second quarterback. Second, yeah, quarterback, second quarterback, taken quarterback taken off the draft. What is that, 19? Yep. Wow, Kenny Pickett. I mean, what? so what do you like? About, what stands out to you about Kenny Pickett that makes you think he's going to take over? It's the it's the big arm. It, it's, uh, it's the mobility. Uh, I think that it's just – it's going to be how how far he can throw it. I mean, he can chunk it, man. He can throw the ball so far. I think he's got the zip on it. Um, you know, I think it'll be good working with Jameis Winston. Jameis might be able to start the first four to six weeks. Honestly, if he could start the full year and give him a year behind Jameis Winston, um, you know, it's not the best best quarterback to learn from. I mean, maybe you watch the tape and find out where the linebackers are. Um, I was going to say, it might be the best guy to learn from. <laughs> yeah, he can teach you what not to do with the position. So, I, to me, it's it's all about the arm strength, and, and I think that it's going to help out. It's exactly what Sean Payton would love in a quarterback. Someone who can move his feet, you know, enough. He's not going to scramble like Lamar Jackson, but he can get out of situations and he can still launch the ball down the field. Yep. Uh, hella experience. I mean, you know, he was, what, four or five years at, at Pitt. I mean, I, I, I like that pick. He, he, I, I agree that he – could and probably will start this first year. I, I'm not a believer in James Winston anymore. Um, small hands, but I, I think we've all debunked that, huh? Debunk that mattering. Is it? Is it debunk? Well, debunk that that matters. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on, Josh. Number twenty, the number twenty pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, there's been there's been some rumors here, Josh. They're looking for. I mean, they got Mitch, but. Hey, the, I've, heard, I've heard some pretty pretty spicy rumors about Mr. Corral. 
in Pittsburgh. Uh, no, Kyler, sorry, it's not Corral, but it was a quarterback. They, Pittsburgh right. Steelers, number 20, Desmond Ritter, Cincinnati. Love it. Desmond Ritter, like I said earlier, I mean, he's a, if not the most, if not the most athletic quarterback in the draft, I mean, it's him or Malik Willis. Yeah, so I mean, this guy has everything he wants. I think that he'll fit in with Mike Tomlin. <clears throat> he's got the intangibles. He's got the, I mean, you know, Steelers haven't been shy that they want a quarterback. I think this is an easy guy to take. And I wouldn't be shocked there, Josh, with those two quarterbacks taken right in a row if they weren't swapped for each other. Yeah, either way. Bring Pickett, I mean, because Pickett's from Pitt. Yeah, either way. I mean, wouldn't surprise me. All right, 21, Josh. New England, New England Patriots. That's your only pick of the first round. I think it's, I mean, I think they have like two two more in the second round, something like that. But do you see them trading or uh, sticking with this one? No, I think they stick with it. I, I realize I haven't done any trades in this mock draft, which kind of hurt me because I really wanted the Vikings. Well, look, we're gonna here. we're gonna blame Shane and Cole for that. Yes, yeah, because they were supposed to be on with us doing this, but sick and tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, okay, so number twenty one, <laughs> the New England Patriots are going to select Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. I they don't have Calvin Lloyd, Dante Tower, Jamie Collins. I mean, this guy is going to bring in immediate help. Gives Bill Belichick exactly what he needs. They need a linebacker. That's crazy because this is one of my higher-rated linebackers, and people are going to say after after Bill Belichick drafts this guy, how did this guy fall to Bill, Bel- Bill Belichick? I mean, mm-hmm. Josh Devin Lloyd, his anticipation is off the charts. He's a redshirt senior, which means he played five years in college. He's going to come in there, know every single part of – playbook he had previously learned which means he has the ability to learn many many playbooks over and over will come in day one of training camp and make an impact yeah i mean it just he's gonna be right there it's the it's the like you said immediate impact and it's gonna help them out so much on the defensive side of the ball just like bill belichick loves to play it's gonna help steve out immensely i don't know how much he's doing but uh green bay josh are they gonna get a josh they have to get a receiver this time right <laughs> uh, Josh, you, you can't. Uh, Cole's gonna listen. Cole's gonna listen. Okay, um, you know I I get it, Cole. I get it. You want them to get an art, uh, a wide receiver. Um, there's a couple of options that they could go here, Kyler. Um, has a lot of been taken? No, he's not. Um, and fuck it's, around. It's between him and Traylon Burks. Um, but the other, my other thing, Kyler, is I just don't know that Green Bay is gonna get a receiver. Um, do they need one? Obviously. Should they get one? Obviously. Sorry, Cole, but you know, they don't always do what they need to do. Um, but in this mock, I will give them the benefit of the doubt after getting rid of Devontae Adams that they did have a plan on getting a wide receiver. And I will go ahead and give them a lot of they from Ohio State. Josh, you had me worried there. <laughs> Chris Olave, I mean, he's the best route runner in this draft. He is the I mean, his routes are Antonio Brown esque. They are absolutely fluid. I mean, he's not the best. I mean, he's a little undersized. He's not the best at going up and getting a 50-50 ball. But, uh, I mean, he Garrett Wilson has gotten the Dix comparison. I see it more in this Chris Olave guy. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I'm, Josh, I'm for Cole's sake, for Aaron Rodgers' sake, I mean, for, for the, the state of Wisconsin, I, I need Green Bay. So Chris Olave is not going to be at 22, but I need Green Bay to end up with someone like Chris Olave. Well, I think you might be happy with who I have at 23 for Arizona. Who's that? Traylon Burks, Arkansas, Ooh, wide receiver. I like that. I like that, Josh. And he played inside, played outside. I mean, Josh, he played a little Wildcat quarterback. I mean, he sounded like a perfect Patriot to me, but him in Arizona, I like that a lot. I, I knew he would. And, you know, this is a – my only concern here is that, you know, they tried going, uh, um, uh, oh, Swiss Army Knife kind of guy mm-hmm. with, um, oh, my gosh, guy who, uh, Rondell Moore, yeah. uh, short, fast, so a little bit different here. Um, I, I think that Traylon Burks could do some great things in a Cliff Kingsbury offense. Uh, he'll be running around like a crazy man. I think it is a great pick for Arizona to be able to score even more points than they already do. Yeah, if you seen the dude play, he's like 6'3", 230. He play, he, he, he's a great, he's a cool, cool player to watch. Uh, I like that pick. I like that pick. 24 Dallas, Josh. This pick is going to be uh, have the eyes of the nation on it. 
I mean, looking for an edge rusher, but they're all gone. Offensive guard, of course, to beef up that line. And a wide receiver. I mean, they lost one in the offseason. Uh, yeah, I think that there is a, uh, there's a couple of different things that they could do. They could uh, either choose to go all in on the defense or all in on the offense. Um, so this is one of the most – one of the more interesting picks to me. Like you said, it'll be watched by the entire nation um, just because this is America's team. And the funny thing or the crazy thing about Dallas Collar is that they need everything because obviously you lose Amari Cooper. So you have to just, you know, have all the faith in CeeDee Lamb and Gallup to get healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of those guys over there. Um, but you also, you know, you need a better offensive line to be able to take care of Zeke and help him get through the lines. So uh, it's kind of hard, you know, because they have so many needs. And obviously the defense has, uh, has big problems on it. So – just holes. I mean, it's not really a big problem. There's just guys that, go, I mean, make boomer bust plays all the time. Yeah, but I mean, it's, I mean, these are big problems with this team. That I is mean, a big problem. Big problems are little holes for this team. Yeah. Um, and they lost so many people. You know, I think though that I'm going to go ahead and stick with. I've seen this in a couple of different places. Um, I think that I like. Kenyon Green, a guard from Texas A&M. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not crazy about him, but he'll be able to, you know, uh, take up Tyron Smith, help out the line for a little bit, plug and play. He's getting older, give him a spell whenever he needs it. So I, I think it just makes sense for the Cowboys here. That's a good pick. He's a prototypical guard. Um, he's kind of he's kind of limited to that position. He can play a little, little bit of tackle, but you're right to uh, to learn under a veteran like that. I think it could really help him. I like that pick a lot for Dallas. Uh, Josh, do you want to go? Do you want to stop at 25? Do you want to go all the way to 32? Uh, I mean, we only have seven left, so I mean, I'm good to go all the way to 32. Okay, let's do it then, buddy. Buffalo. They need a quarterback. They need a defensive lineman. And a, wouldn't mind a running back either, to be honest. And we haven't seen one. Uh, we have not seen one. Uh, Buffalo does need one, but I also think that they need a cornerback. Mm -hmm. um, they need someone in the secondary. Um, there's a couple of different fits here, um, but I think that I'm going to give them uh, – I don't know how to pronounce this guy's first name, but it is Care Elam from Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, really good. I mean, just a – a beast. I mean, he looks good. I think he's going to give them exactly what he needs to fill the secondary. And I think it'll be a solid pick for Buffalo moving in, trying to uh, get over the hump and win themselves a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, you're right. There's guys just like him, Andrew Booth as well. Uh, the guy out of uh, the guy out of Wash Kyler Kyler Gordon. I mean, guys like that. Even I mean, the guy I mentioned earlier, Dax Hill. I mean, any of those guys could have went there and could go in the next few spots. Could, Teams that are looking for corners, looking for, for guys to shore up that secondary. That's a good pick there from Buffalo. Uh, 26th with Tennessee. Josh, they have to get a wide receiver. I don't think that they do. Uh, I, I think that they get an offensive lineman. Yeah, that's that, that's their second need for sure. Um, and and it's a tough choice here on who on which one they pick. Um, I will probably give them Zion. Uh, to have already no, I don't think you have Zion, Zion Johnson. Johnson I don't think so. Yeah, I want to give Zion Johnson to the Tennessee Titans here. Uh, everything I've read, makes too much sense. everything I've read about him, Josh, is he is only a guard. He plays guard. If you move him to something else, he does not play it. Won't play it. Can't play it. So, I mean, anything interior, protecting interior, that's going to be a problem. I mean, early in his career, maybe if he could get to the right spot, maybe find a. Uh, a tackle that's pretty strong, Cinda that's pretty strong. He'll, he'll be able to really blossom to a good guard and maybe later on move on to those other things. But uh, the lot, the I mean, like you said, the lineman depth in this in the later rounds is insane. Yeah, and, and I think that this right here is a good, uh, you know, top ten kind of guy to be able to just central, you know, to center your offensive line, be able to anchor it, and be able to move forward building around him. You definitely uh, drafted Ken Green, huh? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Uh, uh, well, I thought I did. Yes, whenever I go back and listen to this, I knew that I could give him to someone. I don't know where it is. Oh, Dean uh, Charters. No, Kenyon Green. 
He's a center. Oh. He's a guard. Uh, I thought I just did because he's from A&M. Oh, yeah, I gave him to the Cowboys. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was zoned out there. Uh, there's only, there's really only uh, one. No. What would you say? Oh, no, I was saying you're good. No, there's only one lineman that I really have left, and that's Tyler Lindenbaum, who's a center. I mean, and, and he's like the same thing with the other guys, like I just mentioned with Zion. I mean, this guy is only a center. I mean, the, his his length, uh, it's just – it doesn't fit any other position. So he needs to find that correct spot, kind of like Zion Johnson. Yeah. Moving on, the Buccaneers, Josh. and oh, I'm sorry, are we at – yeah, we're at the Buccaneers. Yeah. Um, and here's an interesting, very interesting pick because, I mean, there hasn't been – there's been a few quarterbacks off the board. So, if they were to get a quarterback, that would confirm because Tom Brady is, is a free agent after the season. So, if they draft a quarterback, that almost confirms that those reports that Tom wanted out and wanted to go own the Dolphins, right? Oh, Yeah. So how likely is it that they draft a quarterback? Not very. Okay. Where do they go? Uh, I think they take the center. I think they take Lindenbaum. Okay. Uh, I think that they're uh, they're protecting Tom Brady for one more year. You don't re-sign Tom Brady for the hopes of not winning a championship. Yep. I mean, he judged, this guy's the purest blocker in the draft. I mean, he, his technique is completely sound. Like I said, put him in – who needs a center? Because this guy's a center. If you need a center who can play guard sometimes, this guy's not your guy. You know what I mean? They got their, they got their guards. They got, they got worse out there as well. I mean, hey, watch out for the Bucs. Uh, Packers are up again, Josh. What do they do? Uh, Packers are a fun pick here. Um, we've already got them taking uh, – who did we have them taking? Oh, you had Malave. Oh, yes. Okay, so we've already got the quarterback. Now we're going to go ahead and take the edge rusher, who I could see them taking first. Can't believe I let him fall this far. But we are going to go ahead and take George Karlaftis. Karlaftis. Oh, Josh, I love that pick. Josh, here's, here's a quote I found from an from a, a anonymous executive. Has a GPS to find the quarterback. Oof, that is really good. That's a fucking great quote. I mean, everything this kid does is as good as anyone else. Josh, it's just his length isn't there. And we'll see if teams, these 28 teams, however many teams, 27 teams regret taking that length into account so much. And I think they are going to regret it. I think that he's going to be very good. It's going to be a really good uh, upgrade for the Green Bay Packers. Um, and I also would not be surprised if they picked him before uh, they went wide receiver because we've known them historically to not go uh, weapon first mindset. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that this is a guy they have on the board and that they want. All right. Now we got the Chiefs back to back, 30 and 31. I'm sorry, uh, 29 and 30. Uh, what do you got with them? Uh, so 29, I mean, I know it doesn't matter which, uh, which order we go here. I think that I'm going to – I mean, they're looking for wide receivers. I mean, obviously, they lost Tyron Matthew um, in the offseason, but they did, they did re-sign. Uh, they did sign a new, uh, a new safety to come in and fill that role. They got it looking for some, some offensive line help. Yeah, I mean, they've got, I mean, they've got some holes, too. I mean, this, this team needs to, to rework. I think that, you know, getting Pickens here helps them six foot three. Um, you know, the ACL kept him out last season, but I think he's a guy that's going to go fast. Um, I think that they're going to be excited. I think that uh, he's been kind of flying, flying under the radar, and this is a perfect weapon for uh, for Patrick Mahomes to take the place of Tyree Kill. Maybe not the speed, but I think it's a big body that can go up and get some of these balls. The name cut out when you said it. What was it? Oh, George Pickens. Yeah, I like that a lot. like that pick a lot. And what do they do with 30? Uh, 30? I... So it's either edge or cornerback. Um, it's one of the two. And I think that they are gonna go Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback from Clemson. I mean, you can't go wrong with can't go wrong with that. That dude is a 
stud athlete. Just a, I mean, quick off the edge, very quick off the edge. Uh, 31, Josh, I mean, the AFC champions, the Bengals. I mean, uh, you need to show them. They, they spent a ton um, of they spent a ton of money I mean, on that offensive line. Couple- My fault. We we're kind of we kind of lagging a little bit. Let's let it let's let it catch up. I'm gonna edit these because your eyes are still lagging. So the Bengals, I mean, they spent money in the offseason on the offensive line. They showed that up. They spent a lot, some money in the defense as well. So, Josh, where do you see them going here with this uh, 30th, 31st pick of the draft? Uh, 31st pick of the draft, Kyler trade alert. Ding. Ooh. Um, I think that you could see I, – I mean, I think that there's a good chance that they tried to trade back out of this. Um, let me see. Let me look at a at a team here that I think might want to uh, want to bump up to this thirty one spot and see uh, if well, what the would draft they, picks. What would they be trading up for? Well, I think they're just trying to trade back. I, I don't think that they necessarily. No, well, I'm saying, what well, what would the team trading up be trading up for? I mean, because I mean, a t- so let's let's say there's not many quarterbacks left, are there? No, no, not very many. So, I mean, it might be a team looking for a quarterback. I mean, the Lions are right there at 32. Uh, I don't have the draft thing in front of me. Um, it might be a team looking for a receiver because there's not many receivers left either in that elite class. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, such a tricky spot for Cincinnati. If they don't if they don't trade back, I think that Cincinnati is probably going to try and take – um, let me pull my board back up here. Sorry. I, I think that they take. Probably a safety. I think they probably get the second safety off the board in Daxton Hill from Michigan. Uh, the, Michigan had a really good defense. Yeah, they had a great defense, Josh. They, they fucking they finally beat Ohio State. Yeah. And Daxton Hill is a guy who can come in and instantly make it at the number 31 spot. I'd be shocked if he slipped to 31. Like I said earlier, he plays in the middle of the field. Anything in the middle of the field, that man is coming to disrupt. And it's like I said earlier, he looks like he he seems like he's if he's not involved in every tackle, he's there helping his teammates up because he just he just missed getting involved into the tackle. And he loves, like I said, he loves that hit stick. Dax Hill, I, I like that pick a lot. All right, 32, Lions, last pick of the first round. Uh, Lions are going to take, for the, at the last pick of the draft, they're going to take Lewis Sign from Georgia, the safety uh, I think they gave up one safety in Georgia uh, or one uh, Georgia star at number two, but they're not going to do it here. Collar, the Georgia team is going to do everything they can here. Um, we had who do I have the Lions taking? Uh, oh, I, yeah, I had the Lions taking uh, Thibodeau. And so I think this is just a great, great opportunity for them to be able to take this spot right here. Um, helps out with the safety, helps out with everything that they need moving forward. Um, and I think this is exactly what they need to do. Uh, they don't need to focus on a quarterback right now. Build up your team, build up all the other skill positions, or build up all your trench positions, the defense side of the ball, make your team better, and trust Jared Goff to get you through the, what you need and, and just build your team up. Get the, get the system going. It's going to be another rough year. You'll be back at the top of the draft. Go get your quarterback next year when it's a draft that has a lot of really good talent coming through, and I think next year's a year for quarterbacks. Yeah, that's right. Also, wide receivers as well. I mean, we talked about all these all these Ohio State wide receivers. The best ones still playing for fucking Ohio State, Smith and Jigba. Yeah, and he's going to be fantastic coming out. Jesus. All right. This is this has officially been the BYB Draft Spectacular. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. It's 
I got. I mean, you see all the notes here, and we're gonna try. I'm kind of in a green screen here, but peek behind the curtain. But uh, Spotify's got this new thing where maybe we, you can watch the episodes live on Spotify um, as well as YouTube. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure we get on that tomorrow, today, tonight. Um, so make sure you watch this before the draft, maybe during the draft. See how wrong we are. Let us know. Let us know on Twitter. Uh, Josh, you gonna plug the Twitters one more time? Oh yeah, go follow. Us. On, on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Burster Bubble on Twitter, it's at Sports BYBP. Kyler's at Kyler012, and I am at jkeaton 22 Follow us for all of our polls, funny stuff. We'll be live tweeting during the draft to see how wrong we are. We might even keep a tally of uh, how many times Josh got it wrong or how many times Josh got it right, depending on which one is more uh, more often occurring. So I think this has been a fun episode. Go follow us on all that stuff. Go follow uh, Cole on Twitter. Kyler, I don't know Cole's Twitter handle. J, um, our new J, under, sick. J underscore Cole underscore Jackson. Well, that's just way too long. We're going to have to make him shorten that. And uh, Go follow our fantasy football expert who is supposed to join us tonight, but he is sick. He should join us for a post-draft uh, uh, post uh, recap just so we can see what his thoughts were, get his thoughts on how wrong I was with the draft picks. Um, I know he will not be happy with the Chargers picks. So we'll see what the thought is there. Go follow Shane our fantasy football expert at Fantasy BYB. Go follow Underapp Sports. It is a great uh, family over there that do live streams. We just did a mock draft for them live two nights ago. Go follow them uh, on all social media out- outlets. They have so many great shows with Connie and Perry and the whole gang. Go follow at Underapp Sports. With that, Kyler, this has been the BYB NFL 2020 first round mock draft for the first time ever. I think it was a fantastic show. I think we got them all right no matter what happens on Thursday. A hundred percent. I mean, we don't, we don't even need to watch. Just go ahead and uh, lock it in. All right, buddy. And yeah, and I've got a ton of basketball takes that I wanted to get on this episode, but we're going to save them. We're going to save them. We're going to have two episodes next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. See you then, buddy. See you, man.